So then I clicked on the X button to make it go away, but then it was a link to another ad, and when I tried to cancel that, another window came up, and it was this. Dude. What the f***, bro? What does this mean, dude, bro? What the f***, bro? Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and one of the big arguments, long-standing arguments, against digital comics has been that when you buy the comic digitally, you don't actually own it, and it turns out that is come to fruition there is a company that essentially has their own digital comics platform that was like the backbone for other comic publishers digital comic uh, offerings and made fire is going out of business there's been a uh, there's been an announcement so if, if you bought comics using the archie app or i think it's boom studio scout there's a few other ones but those are the three big ones uh, you're kind of yeah. SOL. You have a couple of days to download them if you can. If you, if it's Archie, you can. It's already offline. And here to talk with me about that is comic book writer, award-winning editor Joe Corral. Just kind of talk about some of the the trials and tribulations and dangers of digital comics. How you doing, Joe? I'm all right, Wes. How are you? Well, I've been better. I'm glad that I didn't have like the Archie app or the Boom mm -hmm. Studios app. Uh, you know, I use uh, Comicsology. But this is yeah. one of the things that a lot of people, when 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 I have championed, and I do champion digital comics, I do still think it's the future. Mm -hmm. I think in a subscription model, everyone's like, but you don't own it. What if something happens, you lose your entire collection that maybe you've been paying for? And unfortunately, that that is what's happened. We've seen people out on social media talking about, I bought Boom Studio Comics you know, through their app for years now, and mm -hmm. I'm basically SOL, and I get no refund or anything like this. This is kind of a big deal, Joe. Yeah, um, th this is, uh, I mean, uh, Made Fire uh, really launched like 10 years ago. I think it was 2011. Uh, this was right when I was getting like back into comics for like the third time. I, I had started working uh, close to uh, Midtown Comics and was going like that was the first year I, I made it a point to like really go uh, to New York Comic Con like every, all like four days and I, I was more plugged in then. So so they were making these announcements then and, and Made Fire was, was rolling out and people were talking about it. People were talking about doing original comics work on there. And uh, it was looking like it was going to be something that was part of the future. So, so it's been interesting seeing all this uh, stuff kind of unfold uh, in the past, I guess, couple of months uh, since it looked like things were going bad for them. Apparently, they were trying to do some type of acquisition or sell-off where a bigger company would acquire the pro uh, the property. Didn't really end up working out. So, Mayfire had some like big ideas. You mentioned they they launched about ten years ago, where it was basically going to be like motion books, motion comics, where there was mm -hmm. a, an aspect of animation applied to the comic books, at least the the original stuff they were making. Yeah. And then, of course, you'd have libraries of Archie. Um, there was Marvel on there, Image. I think IDW, so they had access to, to those things, but the, the apps for those companies run se separately. Now, this was a competitor for Comixology, mm -hmm. and a lot of people would probably, maybe would tell you that Mayfire was the better platform, the better application, but Amazon, you know, saw that they wanted to acquire Comixology and ended up kind of being the winner. That's kind of the way it works out when you have these competing technologies, when you had like, was it Blu-ray and HD DVD? kind of thing yes one of them um, has to win right you know vhs and betamax yeah uh, lots of stuff there but i i think you had these publishers like you know archie boom uh scout who were making these deals with places like made fire i imagine the reason you do that is because you get a bigger slice of that percentage going your way uh comiXology uh takes a a hefty fee uh for that i I forget if it's it's like between either like 33% and 50% of the sale, uh, which is also part of why the digital comics are, Regular you, know, you know, the, the cost they are. Because a lot of people go like, oh, there's no overhead. It's not like there's, you're not printing, you're not shipping. And it's like, yeah, but Comixology takes a, a nice cut. And, uh, and, and, and that's their, their right as, as company. You, you know, I, I'm not trying to make it sound like you know anti-capitalist uh, people can't make money or anything like that but but yeah that that's how it is and that's part of why those numbers are are as high as they are uh in terms of um you know buying individual comics and and whatnot so 
so yeah but then you get this situation where made fire was trying to do it and um you know the beat covers this there's um you know some articles and, and things about it where the motion comics just weren't clicking and then they don't you know, i thought i always thought when i, I was like digital comics there's, there's going to be some type of animation and you know maybe it'll make the the bigger scenes more, more uh dramatic or maybe there'll be some type of sound effect added to the to the moment Mm -hmm. And I tried it, and it, it doesn't add to anything. I'd rather just read the comic to turn it out. Yeah, I remember the first real motion comic I, I, I remember checking out, I think was the uh, Astonishing X-Men of, like, the weed and stuff, and I was just like, I'm not into this. This is yeah. not doing it for me. I'd rather just watch a real cartoon. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, there's that, and, you know, sometimes they do those animated comic trailers and again it's like i'm not really it doesn't sell me uh but but yeah so you had this going on but you also have the rise of uh webtoons and uh, there's a couple of other uh korean uh production companies uh, tapas media uh webtoons being like the really big one but i mean we we've even seen a, in the last several months what was it michelle wells uh, formerly at dc is now working at Tapas Media. You, you know, uh, years before that, I mean, uh, Fabian Nicieza is doing original comics for Webtoons. Like, they're they're putting that money and effort into it, and because of the way those platforms work, they, they're they popular across the globe, they get millions of hits a month. It was hard for Madefire to make up that ground. Yeah, it's a competitive space. I think everybody, you know, around that time when you know, people, you know, people start having tablets and, you know, it's a perfect platform to, to really read digital comics. And, you, you know, everyone tries to get in there and there has to be winners and losers. Here's one thing that, that, may, that worries me, Joe. It's that Comixology is owned by Amazon. You're like, well, Amazon's stable. Absolutely, they are. They're not going out of business. They're not going to declare bankruptcy. Sure. But they are a for-profit business you know their mm -hmm. bottom line is making a shitload of money i don't imagine comiXology is is generating the revenue that some of their other uh technology offerings or applications are so they could up and up and say you know what not worth our time one day i could absolutely see them doing that if, if um, you know if the sales don't start climbing or anything you know they don't there's not a ton of incentive incentive for them to stay in the game other than that that they're already there you know what i mean yeah i mean i think that's one of the benefits in terms of like a subscription model which comiXology has comiXology unlimited and all that but you're not going to get people as upset with you if you're pulling something that was part of a grander subscription service than if you purchase something individually which is what's happening now and uh, are no longer able to access it. I, I would think uh, Amazon just has more power behind them, more more manpower, more uh, reach, that if they ever did something where they were like, we're going to end our individual purchasing options and focus on subscription models, that they, they would be able to reach people and get enough people to, to download what they need to before they do that. But there, I don't think there's much incentive for them to do anything like that in, in, in the near future anyway, but you are seeing the growth of, you know, Marvel Unlimited. Uh, Tom Brevoort was recently on a, a stream uh, discussing that. Um, I think it was the Word Balloon stream where he mentioned that, you know, Marvel Unlimited's doing well, that that's, a, you know, a, a chunk of the revenue they, they have in uh, that you know, it was easy for them to maintain and, and grow. You know, we didn't go into specific numbers or anything like that, but you're going to see more of a focus on that stuff. And maybe eventually they'll, you know, tie it into Disney Plus and it'll just be a whole like, oh, you know, if you pay X amount more a month, you get the Marvel library. Kind of similar to what, you know, HBO Max and, you know, DC Universe might be trying to do so so yeah yeah I, I really wish they would kind of uh attach those things but you know I, I feel like you know marvel and dc are kind of in a weird spot where they're they're kind of heavily leaning on comicsology 
I do not blame them for making their own platforms. I hope one day DC and Marvel can get together, which would incentivize the other publishers to come on board, make their own platform mm -hmm. you know, that, that supports comics, and we get a true subscription service. Mm -hmm. That's when the floodgates will open, when people feel like they're really getting that value for, for their money. Because when you like, compare what you're getting, if, if you had the comics all... Comicsology, Marvel Unlimited, DC uh, Infinity, like yeah. the, even the amount of content there doesn't rival what you would get with just a Shonen Jump subscription. Yeah, I mean it's it's very tough. I, I think there's going to be more splintering before there's more consolidation, like we're seeing with uh, TV, Streaming. where you know every channel is going to have their own app, and, and it's just <laughs> going to go right back to being like cable. Uh, yeah. until uh, a few channels uh, understand just how much no one was ever going to pay to watch them, that they had to be part of that bundle. But Yeah, there's definitely going to be some consolidation on the streaming side because there, you can only have so many subscriptions before it's even more expensive than, than cable was to begin with. People are going to have to start consolidating content. And I think yeah. that will eventually happen with comics too. Yeah, you know, so, so we'll start seeing that, uh, you, you know, because distribution through digital is, is just another it, it's a whole other ball game people are going to try this out you know it's maybe you're going to get like a penguin random house or a diamonds type thing like similar to comiXology or you know comiXology may rebrand and change their model in a way to make it inviting for everyone to just use them uh or uh, Comixology might wait until a lot of other of these apps crash and burn or make them no money and then wait for everyone to come right back to them. Like, you know, we'll, we'll see how, how it all goes. I mean, Comixology has their uh, original services um, and it's all scaled. I mean, the amount of money it costs to have Chip Zdarsky do an original comic for you that's like maybe like five issues is uh, a drop in the bucket compared to you know netflix uh coming up with original content so you know we'll see we'll see if um if they end up going through stuff like that you know they have this you know deal with skybound and, and robert kirkman maybe they'll start you know mining some more original content uh from image maybe we'll start getting more books that are on image that become these like comiXology exclusives there's there are so many ways this can go and in the next few years maybe two to three years what as these different like tablet uh prices keep dropping like tablets keep getting better and mm -hmm. costs drop you're gonna start getting more people coming on board if you can get you know and eight inch 10 inch 12 inch like tablet that looks really great that read that reads comics just fine or or is even like optimized to do that kind of stuff and it's only you know 50 bucks 80 bucks and, and you can sign on to some services that's going to start becoming more and more appealing and that's when i think you're going to start seeing more people be like oh, you know what i'll i'll get a nice hardbound book of, of like a classic run that I, I, I need no matter what. Um, and everything else I can just read on these apps. So I, digital comics can be very frustrating. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times if you haven't downloaded them to your, to your uh, device, you, if you don't have internet, obviously you don't have access to the comic books. Me personally, something recently happened with my comiXology account and I lost like, hundreds of dollars <laughs> of worth of books that I'd bought over, over the years on there. And I just don't have access to them. I'm, I'm getting it sorted out. I imagine I'll get mm -hmm. them all back eventually. Yeah. So it's not quite as bad for the people that were using Madefire or Archie or, um, or Boom Studios that had purchased these through there. But it can be very frustrating and they really uh, need to make the experience better. There's, they, there's gotta be a better, better way, Joe, especially with, you know, just navigating and, and, uh, like the comiXology, where it goes panel to panel, sometimes it'll skip them. It just doesn't mm -hmm. look good. I would rather pinch and, and like navigate the screen like the old fashioned way than use their little uh, page turner. Yeah, I, I tend to do that too when, when I'm reading digital comics. Um, I, I usually read them on a computer if I'm reading them anyway. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, you'll get 
uh, comics from, you know, digital comics from friends or, or things like that. They'll send you PDFs and, you know, or you get a PDF uh, for backing a Kickstarter and Indiegogo. And, you know, it's the same thing. You just zoom in, zoom out. Uh, so, so I'm used to that. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. Very similar to VHS to DVD to, you know, Blu-ray. Uh, even with these streaming services, the the one thing I know that, you know, it, it bothers me, it bothers a lot of people, it's every generation, you'll lose a little more content. Yeah. You know, there, there are movies that never made the jump from VHS to DVD, never made the jump from DVD to Blu-ray, things like that. And, and you're going to see that again here too with, with comics. And there's going to be some stuff that's just forgotten and is going to be going for, you know, $500 on eBay for some like random indie comics or this and that. And, you know, we'll, we'll have to see who, who goes in on these different services, what ends up being popular. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. It, it's a shame uh, what happened with made fire for a number of reasons. You know, they, they also had employees and yeah. I'm sure there were plenty of people working there that had families and need to support people. And uh, that's a real shame uh, what's going on with that. And it's a tough market right now uh, with, with comics. There's a little more uh, contracting than I think there is uh, growth at the moment from what I see. Uh, that doesn't mean there isn't growth around the corner, but it's, it's a tough spot. You, you don't envy people who are are looking uh, for that level of work right now in, in comics. So, you know, my heart goes out to uh, the, the people there who uh, need to uh, you know, keep making money and, and keep getting by. So hopefully, you know, everything works out with uh, the people there. Hopefully uh, Archie and Boom and uh, Scout and, and others are able to have a quick turnaround on a new app or have some sort of deal with uh, comiXology or whatever they need to do to keep that going. And, it, you know, we'll, we'll see what's in store for the rest of digital comics coming up, but this is, yeah. uh, this is an interesting turn. It's a, it's a crappy thing all around, whether you're a customer or you're an employee or, you know, even the owners, I'm sure they didn't want this to happen, but this is the dangers of digital comics. When you buy them digitally, you don't own them. You own access to them using the cloud. <laughs> Unless you download it in like in a PDF format, and some publishers yeah. allow that, some publishers don't, and that's uh, one of the things people have been talking about. There's going to be a better way. I still believe digital comics are the future, but mm. that is definitely one of the flaws right now, and it's certainly highlighted in Mayfire going out of business, yep. and and people that purchase comics through using that application, or if there's a publisher that was kind of uh, using that platform to sell their comics, everyone got kind of gets screwed in the end, and uh, there's got to be a better way, but that is the news, and, and hopefully something better happens soon. Absolutely. And uh, if you got uh, digital comics through uh, Archie's app and, and Boom's app or Scout, and you're listening to this now and you didn't know, go go download those comics before. Uh, also, if, you are, if you're talking about Archie, if you contact the company, they have a bundle of free Archie comics that they will send you. Yes. That they are offering. So they're, they're doing something at least. Yeah, absolutely. So, so check in on that. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.